Chapter 48 The Vast Northern and Southern Polar Regions The enormous coldness serves to temper the destructive impulse of the primary spirits of this planet. How Saturn Affects the Earth It was mentioned in the beginning that this planet has actually only two climates, one of which is an altogether moderate climate, where all the inhabitable countries are located, and whose width, on the whole, occupies more than one-third of the polar region. These lands of the moderate zone are surrounded by a continuous ocean in the north, as well as in the south, where you find only some mudlands. But far away from the main continents, the most northern or most southern parts are usually already frozen in permanent ice. This does not mean that one country in the south and the north is in such a location, but should it be located in the northern hemisphere, then the most northern part is surrounded with permanent ice. And this is strictly for a completely natural reason. Because on Saturn, as on Earth, the polar regions belong to the permanent snow and ice. What do these polar regions on Saturn look like? Even if you have an eye and a feeling for nature, no human fantasy or imagination will have the slightest idea The coldness of these polar regions is so severe that the cold of your own polar regions is like a well-heated oven by comparison. Not only does the water freeze there to a diamond, but at the lowest degree of temperature, even the air freezes to ice rods, which often protrude for miles into the ether. Through this immense pressure, the atmospheric air very often ignites in these regions. And that is the reason why vast areas appear to be glowing for many miles. And this glow increases and eventually results in severe explosions. Consequently, these air ignitions as a result of the immense coldness, decrease the electricity of the air. Thus the coldness increases continuously and occurs in succession over a period of 15 Earth years. During the coldest stage, which lasts 8 Earth years, there are no ignitions, because the air has turned into a completely solid mass. After this period of time, the returning light of the sun gradually begins to dissolve the solid air, which after some dissolution begins to ignite again, and through these ignitions the explosions which are caused by them allow the dissolution of the frozen air to move closer and closer to the particular pole. Are these dreadful regions inhabited? In a natural respect, these regions are not inhabited by any living being, but are inhabited more so in a spiritual sense. Because snow and ice usually provide the imprisonment of restless spirits. When the coldness is the most severe, then the peace spirits in these regions are the busiest. Because through this very act, which comes into being through the natural coldness, they are able to quiet down the fire spirits and temper their excessive fiery destructive force. When it becomes colder and colder in your regions on earth, you can always be certain 
that the destructive spirits on earth are being calmed and tempered by the peace spirits. That these spirits are addicted to fire and destruction may be ascertained from the frequent air ignitions in the polar regions. The more these spirits want to enjoy themselves, the more persistently are they imprisoned by the peace spirits. The lower the temperature drops, the more intensive is the imprisonment of the fire-happy fiends, which, when imprisoned in this manner for several thousand years, finally submit and abandon their passion for fire. They appear as a cloud filled with electricity, and ice-cold winds transform their electrical fire content into hail, which at times may cause some damage. Who are these polar fire spirits on Saturn? They are not the spirits of departed human beings. Instead, they are still primary spirits, out of which the entire celestial body is actually formed. And they gradually pass over into a free existence, in human form, in accordance with the well-calculated order of the Great Spirit. At times it can happen that the spirit of a departed human being, when such a person has been very revengeful during his natural life, will be led back to his natural polar state. This happens very seldom on Saturn, but quite frequently on Earth. The difference between these two spirits is as follows. The spirits of departed human beings which are imprisoned in this manner will never return to a natural physical life. While this is always the case with the primary spirits, because they have to completely clothe themselves in this naturalness before they attain the ability to pass over to a free, independent and consequently absolute or separate life. These primary spirits on Saturn are the ones which are of a highly destructive nature. This is why so many ancient prophets on Earth mentioned that this planet would eat its own children. That is why these primary spirits, when they are no longer primary spirits, must first be thoroughly and properly prepared by the peace spirits before they can enter into an absolute and free life. If that were not, no sun and no planet in the entire universe would be safe from their destructive powers. This is the reason why Saturn is so far from the sun, so that the sun's rays are not capable of affecting such heat as they do on Jupiter, Earth, Venus and especially Mercury, whose inhabitants live mostly in the polar regions and have to endure severe heat. Whereas on Saturn, as you know, the climate is moderate wherever it is inhabited, and even the moderate climate, if it should get too warm, is prevented by the permanent shadow of the ring from overheating. Although the inhabitants of Saturn never enter these ice regions because their greatest fear is of snow and ice. This fear originates from their primary spiritual existence. They know exactly what it looks like in the polar regions, especially the enlightened mountain dwellers. Even the most enlightened have no great interest in viewing these regions or in the description of these regions. However, they have a much greater interest in the concept, description and viewing of the ring.
Why that is so will become clear to you when the ring is discussed in the next chapter. Concerning the polar regions, there is nothing more of importance which would be worthwhile to mention, except that those years on earth when the earth comes closer to Saturn are usually bad and unfruitful years. The reason for this is the excessive polar coldness of this celestial body, and this celestial body's effect often reaches, from a metaphysical point of view, several hundreds of millions of miles, similar to an invisible comet's tail. In the vast solar system, there are by far a greater number of negative comets, which completely consume all the sun's rays that fall upon them, to such a degree that not even the smallest atom is reflected by them. The comets become visible when they have satiated themselves and begin to travel an orderly route. The comets are frequent guests of the planets and make themselves known at certain times, for seconds in the form of shooting stars. However, concerning these negative comets, we shall learn more about them when we examine a sun. We only mention this subject so that you may gather from this explanation how far-reaching and effective the polar coldness of Saturn is at times. This concludes the actual information about this planet. In the next chapter, we shall deal with Saturn's ring.